What was it like hanging out with horses today? <laughs> well, it's a good day. I mean, we're going to take a team photo after this and it's an opportunity to, to do something unique. I mean, we got word probably two or three months ago that they were looking at naming a couple uh, horses after female athletes in uh, Wisconsin, and one being Jesse. Uh, it's just unique. I mean, obviously, she had an impact on our program. An opportunity to set records with national championships, but I think it's pretty uh, interesting that someone wanted to name a horse after her, and so her legacy still lives on. And she'll be galloping around town here uh, when the weather warms up a little bit, so everybody will get a chance to meet her and get a chance to maybe give her a treat, uh, <laughs> which she liked this morning. So, uh, fun experience, uh, unique opportunity, as I told the team, and uh, something fun to do. Definitely. You yeah. like horses, anyway. Yeah. yeah. My wife really likes horses. Uh, I live with horses, but uh, yeah. Well, similar question to past these last couple of weeks. What do you what do you take from this uh, the series, especially you know the the, the loss on uh, Saturday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The game got a little away from us uh, Saturday. Uh, you know, they came out and obviously uh, for them scoring the overtime goal. Uh, you know, Friday energized them. Uh, you know, they hadn't played the weekend before, so a lot of things in play there. And, uh, you know, in both games, we gave up goals early in the game. And, uh, you know, in, in playoff type atmospheres, uh, which that's past week, you know, sort of like, you, you don't want to do that. We sort of shot ourselves in the foot. Uh, you know, had some good opportunities Friday to win the game and came up a little bit short. But, uh, you know, that's part of the, the process. Uh, you know, when adversity hits and, and the team's being challenged, uh, you know, what can you learn from it? What can you take away from it? And the most important thing is what you need to do uh, the next day when you practice to continue that process of, of getting better. Uh, you know, we're a good team. Uh, you know, the last six games, uh, and most of them we played really well. Um, you know, if you gave me a bag with about four or five goals in it and I distribute it within four or five of those games, we probably would have won three or four of them. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, you know, the puck doesn't want to go in. I don't know if Santa, uh, didn't bring us enough goals for Christmas or, or what happened, but uh, since we started, uh, you know, 2023, we haven't been able to score a lot of goals. And so things that we continue to work on, uh, you know, and the message yesterday to the team was, you know, the team's being challenged right now. And, you know, if you reflect on our season and it's uh, September 1 uh, and you're looking, you know, okay, where are we really going to get challenged from the standpoint of where we might face some adversity this season? And you look at those stretch of six games and, uh, you know, whether you win them or you lose them or play well or don't play well, you're going to actually find out more about your team. And, uh, you know, we've certainly found out about our team and now the ability to, you know, from the shoulders up to keep everybody mentally engaged and, uh, you know, don't be naysayers, uh, don't do things negatively because, uh, you know, all the outside noise that, uh, that come, comes at you doesn't do you any good. Uh, the only people that are going to change things and, and push us in a positive direction are the people in the locker room and, uh, you know, clear their minds out, uh, clear the weeds out of them and take all those negative thoughts and continue down the process of how we become better. And, uh, you know, if you do face adversity, which obviously we're facing the last two or three weeks is, uh, you know, trying to figure out things, trying to make things better, but continuing working at it. And, uh, if you really want to become the best uh, version of, uh, of a good hockey team, and adversity helps you along that way. And so how you handle it, how you address it, how you come out of it uh, can be an important factor. In the five weekends left in the season, we have an opportunity to, to continue that process and uh, take things uh, the last three weekends and uh, you know try to make them into a position where we become better because of the experiences that we've had. And so it, it won't get any harder than it was this past weekend. And again, you look at Friday's game, uh, you know, as I told the team yesterday, if we score on our three on one in overtime, we win two to one. Uh, everybody leaves the rink Friday night, Friday night feeling a lot different. Unfortunately, you know, a minute and a half later, they score off a face off and they're leaving the rink feeling <laughs> that way. And we're leaving, you know, oh, we lost four in a row. What are we going to do now? How are we going to respond tomorrow? And, you know, we came out Saturday and again early on shot ourselves in the foot and uh, then it's again you know you got to keep competing you got to keep playing hard because at any point in any given game uh, the momentum can sh you know switch and uh, unfortunately for us we weren't able to do that Saturday but it's a learning experience because 
it won't get any tougher uh, than what we face Saturday. And uh, again, if you learn from it and you push yourself forward and you try to gain some momentum, you know, it can be a real positive experience even though you lost games. Are you getting chances? I mean, that's you always say that. If you're not yep. scoring goals, are we getting the chances? Yeah, I mean, you know, you look at our Friday night game against Duluth. I mean, we had 88 attempts. You know, we had almost 50 shots and a lot of good opportunities. Our second game in Quinnipiac was very similar where, you know, we all chanced them quite heavily and we don't win the game. And, you know, then down at Ohio State, Friday night's game was like a playoff game. And, you know, who's going to get a bounce? Who's going to make a play? What player on each team is going to have that opportunity? And, uh, you know, we took it to overtime and had those opportunities, came up short, uh, and their player made an opportunity that uh, ended up winning the game. And then Saturday, uh, you know, it just, they played, you know, they played better. They were more energized. They were skating faster. And, uh, you know, it's like I told the team prior to Saturday's game, it's been this way for a number of years where when we go play somebody, it doesn't matter who we're playing or where we're playing them, we're going to get their best effort. They get fired up to play Wisconsin, and uh, you know, and they want to beat us. And uh, you know, it's just uh, it was a tough atmosphere Saturday. And uh, you know, hopefully we can grow from that experience. So, you know, we, we go through the next five weekends. We get Minnesota the second weekend before the season ends. Then we get Ohio State back here. And I, I think in those two series, uh, you know, we can really rate how much growth we have uh, experienced and how much we have gotten better because of what we've gone through the last three weekends. You figured Cato's coming in here thinking, oh, yep. we got wounded badgers here, you know? <laughs> yeah, the blood's in the water, and here come the piranhas, so get ready. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, yeah, and they've won six games in a row, and they're feeling good about their game, and so it'll be a good challenge Saturday. And, you know, from where we are today, as I talk to you, to, you know, 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon, you know, we have to have some good practices. And to me, the biggest thing is just to clear your mind and, and, and not worry about... Uh, what might happen is just free your mind up. Uh, we're capable of playing at a real high level. We've shown that the last five or six games, and now we just have to continue to, to get to that space and uh, you know go out. And the best thing would be to get two or three goals uh, early in the game if you're able to do that, because everybody can then relax and say, "Oh yeah, we can score goals again." <laughs> you yeah. talk. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was gonna. You know, one one part of you, you having the scoring goals, but I think Ohio State's power play is one of the. <laughs> Best in the yeah. best in the country, and that was this one area where you know the team was able to kind of contain them. I mean, what, what did you see in that aspect of you know of your of your team's play that at least helped you in that aspect? Yeah, so you know it's a it's a great question because you know when things you know may not be moving in the direction you want them, you're always digging deeper into the rabbit hole trying to figure out you know how we can get better, how can we improve, and so. You know, our penalty kill in you know, the last six games has been really good. We're almost at 95%. And uh, as you mentioned, you know, at Ohio State, uh, you know, we had to kill off a five-minute major and, uh, you know, some other power plays, which we were able to do. Uh, you know, conversely, our power play's got to get better. You know, we've made some changes on it. Uh, we had some good looks in, in both games uh, down at Ohio. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't score goals in that. So, you know, if we're going to have success down the road here, you know, our penalty kill has to, you know, continue to, to progress and stay where it's at. Uh, and then our power play has got to improve. We've got to get some production off our power play uh, because if you don't, then, uh, you know, your, your room for error when you're not scoring a lot really shrinks up. And so, uh, you know, we'll continue to work on those, try to make some adjustments. And uh, the best remedy is for the puck to go in because then all of a sudden when it goes in, everybody relaxes a little bit and that person that scores is going to feel better about himself. And so it's just, again, uh, you know, clearing your mind out, uh, understanding that, uh, you know, we're, we've got good players, we've got a good team. Uh, we've, we've been playing pretty good, we just haven't been winning. And so the next hurdle is to score some goals and win some hockey games. And that's what we're going to try to do here. You talk about the importance of clearing your mind. I know you guys have the meet and greet tonight. What does it do for the team to be able to kind of step back and have moments like that where you can interact one-on-one -on -one with the fans and not be focused on losses and whatever happened last week? Yeah, I mean, we had a good practice yesterday, and, and today is, uh, as I mentioned, is an opportunity to, you know, take a picture with uh, Horse Jesse, something that, you know, you don't normally get to do. And so it, what it does is it brings smiles to your face as you're smiling right now. It's just a unique opportunity. Uh, then we're going to take our team photo, and so, uh, you know, they'll feel good about that and take pictures with their, their classmates uh, and then, uh, you know, get an opportunity tonight to, 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 again, give back to the fans that have been so good for us uh, 
in supporting our program and coming out and watching these young ladies play. It's so it's an opportunity for us to, and actually for our fans to come out and you know see the players without their helmets on and actually get to talk with them and you know get some autographs signed and get to know them a little bit better. So it's again it's it, it's your giving back and you know when you when things are going well it's. Uh, it's always a good idea to, to go do something uh, for somebody else, and that generally makes you feel good. And you know, having Martin Luther King yesterday is an opportunity to, to reflect on a little bit of history and what he's able to do and his legacy is going on. Uh, and so, yeah, it, and you know, as you look at your certain circumstances, it's you know, it could be a lot worse. I mean, uh, it could be the end of the season. We played our last game and we got beat. Now the season's over. Where uh, you know. It, if we're going to be as good as we're capable of being, you know, then adversity is going to help us in that that, that journey. And sometimes, uh, you know, the, the lake and the pond gets a little weedy, and I have a little trouble navigating in that space. And uh, if I keep doing the little things and I keep working at things and I keep trying to get better and I'm taking care of myself, uh, eventually those things get cleared up, and all of a sudden the water gets a little bit clearer, people's confidence goes a little bit higher. And uh, you really start playing uh, up to your capabilities uh, before. After the Duluth series, you talked about how the big message was to balance emotions and keep frustration out of it. Yeah. How important is that message now, considering you guys come back and just kind of making sure that you stay with, you know, go out there, take care of business, and kind of let other stuff go to this place? Yeah, I mean, to me, you know, as a former athlete and as a coach, you know, how do players, uh, you know, if I haven't scored in five, six, eight, nine games, I'm used to scoring. How do I deal with that? And so it's, uh, again, you, you go back to things that are going to help you come out of your slump. So, hey, I may stay after practice. I may get to practice a little bit earlier, shooting, you know, some extra pucks, work on a couple of things just to get, you know, my baseline back to a, a position where, I, you know, I'm comfortable and I'm confident. Uh, and so, you know, collectively as a team, it's one of those situations where you have to come together more so when things aren't going well. The easiest thing is to start nitpicking and starting listening to the outside noises and everybody's got an idea, everybody's got a thought. And, uh, you know, so after a couple tough games or after a couple tough losses, you know, the last thing I want to do is go spread myself around town because people will come up to me and recognize me and, you know, talk, what's going on? What's wrong? I mean, are you guys okay? And it's like, well, yeah, it's just we're going through this period of time and how are we going to handle it? So individually, a player has to, you know, continue to, to, to work on her game, but collectively has to support her teammates, encourage her teammates, uh, and really try to become more tight-knit, try to become closer as you're going through this period because with numbers develop strength. And so if we've got everybody still, you know, with both feet in the boat, pushing in the same direction, then eventually things are gonna, you know, become positive and we're gonna score some more goals, we're gonna win some more hockey games. I'm not worried about that. It's, to me, it's more about, you know, what's between the ears and how I can clear that up because generally people will play their best game when they go on the ice and their minds are clear. They're not worried about making a mistake. They're not worried about scoring a goal. They're not worried about, you know, what's going to happen next. They're not worried about losing hockey and they're just free to play the game. And it just, uh, you know, lightens you up, makes you play a little bit better. And you usually get your best results when you're in that frame of mind. And that's the challenge. Obviously, we're going through a period where, you know, we're being challenged. And collectively as a group, how are we going to ha handle that challenge? And that's, you know, we'll see that Saturday and Sunday of this weekend. One of the statistical anomalies Friday, yeah, Friday's game, there were like 27 blocks, so which is like yep. way, I, I, and as a coach, I don't know, like, what does that indicate? Does that indicate anything to you? Is that just some, you know, I don't know if that stat means anything when you, when you, you know, when you look at the stat sheet and kind of how you, your team play. No, I mean, yeah, as a coach, it's, uh, you know, unlike a fan or somebody else that looks at the, the box score and the first thing they look at is the score. Obviously, you're going to look at that because you either won or lost or tied. But as a coach, you start digging deeper. And so when I see a stat like the number of shots we blocked Friday night, to me, that, that's about commitment. That's about willingness to do you know a bunch of little things and, and sacrifice yourself uh, for the team because uh, it's not an easy uh, thing to do. A lot of people don't like to block shots, especially with, you know, killing a penalty and somebody's taking a slap shot and now you're, you're getting yourself on a way to, you know, 70, 80, 90 mile an hour puck coming at you. And so that's commitment, that's effort. And, you know, those are the things 
you need to do if you're going to win hockey games, especially, you know, the last three weekends we've been playing against teams that are in the top one, top three, top eight of the, in the country. So if you're going to win those games and have a chance to win, you're going to have to do some of those little things. And same thing with our penalty kill, with our power play. And then the, the last thing is, is puck, you know, management. And, and how do you take care of the puck? And so whether you're talking about my team or an NHL team or a men's college team, and if you're managing the puck in certain areas of the ice, it gives you the better chance to win, especially if you go into an environment in Ohio State where it's like pinball, you know, things are happening. It's like Pac-Man, things are going really quick. The puck's moving really fast and how you manage the puck in certain areas is gonna have a big impact on the game. And if you do a really good job, you're going to eliminate a bunch of their scoring chances. And, and parts of the game, we were good. Other parts, we, we weren't good. But, you know, it's welcome to play off hockey. Welcome, you know, to a number one team playing a number whatever we were. Uh, and head-to-head, uh, -head, uh, you know, opponents. And it's it's entertaining hockey. It's fun to watch. And, you know, to answer your question, I, I look at certain stats. And, you know, if, uh, if they stick out like they did uh, Friday night with, you know, blocking shots, that means my, you know, my players are committing. You know, they're, they're trying to do everything they can to win hockey games. Okay. Um, and one other thing I was curious about, could you kind of talk about tweaking the power play a yep. little bit? And I didn't know, like, where it, did you, you know, were there some players you put in there that were different, or did you just kind of mix up the combinations? Uh, we put in, uh, you know, we put Layla, you know, put her in front of the net, uh, you know, in both games. And, you know, then we flip flop uh, Lacey Eden and, uh, you know, Soph Shirley. Um, you know, the, the two units that we have just to give it a little bit of different look and try to keep, create some things. Uh, and again, it, you know, a power play, you know, you're either going to, it's going to look ugly and not go well. Uh, you're going to get a bunch of offensive zone time. Can you create some energy out of it? Can you create some scoring chances so that, you know, the next two, three, four shifts, you can build off that even though you haven't scored. Obviously the objective is just the score on it, but uh, if you don't score on it, you know, you can break it down and say, oh, yeah, we got two or three good opportunities. We got four opportunities. That was an okay power play. We didn't score, but it was okay. Uh, and for the most part, uh, other than maybe one against Duluth, uh, it's, it's been that way. We've had some good looks, good opportunities. And collectively, the last five games, the puck hasn't gone in for us. And so what do you do? Well, you roll your sleeves up. You know, you bear down, you start working on some things a little bit more heavily. And, you know, that's what we're going to do in the next three or four days. And uh, the best ingredient is for us to go out in the first period and score a couple goals, which will take everybody's tension and, and release it. And then they'll start feeling good about themselves. But again, it's, it's one of those things that uh, you just have to keep pursuing. You have to work a little bit harder. Uh, you have to compete a little bit harder. And so as much as we competed Friday night, you know, got to understand that when we play them again, you might have to compete a little bit harder. And so that might be the difference in, in winning and losing. And so it's a, it's a mindset in the players as they prefer for the game that, you know, we're going to have to expend some things here tonight if we're going to have the chance to be successful.